Let's go to our Lord in prayer. Lord, we can indeed shout to you, because Lord, you're the one who loves us, you created us, you call us your children, and Lord, each day is an opportunity to reflect that amazing love that you've given to us in Jesus Christ. Help us to treasure that quality time, that time that you spent with us directly, time which you make for us, the billions of people who are on this earth, to call out to you, to worship, and to give you thanks. And we give you thanks for that blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, early in your child's club soccer season, you get a note that comes home with your child. You now have two options. You can either volunteer to spend a week in the concession, a weekend in the concession stand, or you can write a check for $25. Which one are you going to do? I think I know what most people today will choose. They'll go ahead and write the check for $25. How can you squeeze one more thing into what's already an overcrowded calendar and schedule? Most of us, and I admit maybe I put myself in this boat, would write the check rather than give a couple hours of your time. You see, time is indeed our most precious commodity. Each one of us has been given 24 hours a day. No more, no less. We each have to make important decisions about how we're going to spend all our time. There are always going to be more things to do than there are hours in the day. And the older I get, the more I'm seeing that. From the middle school student who's trying to figure out, okay, how am I going to get my homework done, make it to my next practice, and still have some time to spend with my friends, to the retiree, maybe living in Arizona, because today is just not a good fit for this, who's trying to figure out how I'm going to squeeze all that golf in this week. You see, all of us have more things to do than there are hours available today. When you give your time to someone, you're giving them a piece of your life. You can never regain the moments that you spend with someone else or with the Lord himself. When you give your time to someone or to the Lord, you're showing them that you love them, that they're important to you. That is a clear expression of love. Now, as we work through these five love languages that Dr. Gary Chapman wrote about, and in particular, how they relate to our relationship with our Lord and with Jesus, today, we come to that precious commodity of quality time. The key word there is quality. It's not just the same as being in the same room as someone else. For instance, this will be fun. How many of you tend to sit in about the same spot each week for Sunday worship? Oh my, not me over here. I, have, I was actually saying, don't have to raise your hands because I can almost draw a Venn diagram, a chart of where everyone sits. Now, and I'm not being critical of you either. Some week I'm going to mess you up and change the arrangement around. But anyway, I don't want to cause a fight. How well do you know the person who's seated next to you? How about, well, husband, wife, doesn't count. <laughs> How about, oh boy, it's shooting holes here. Um, how about the person in front of or behind you? Or how about that family that's across the aisle? I am not in any way suggesting that you don't know the people in this room. But just because you spend time with people in the same room doesn't mean it's quality time. You could have spent months with people in this room if you've been coming to this church for years, but that does not automatically convert it over to quality time. Quality time is this. It's when you give your undivided attention to another individual. Here's a prime example of what this is not. <laughs> we see a group of people at a table. All of them have their, well, noses kind of in their phones. I have seen people at the same table texting each other. Okay, that's the way it is. Here's an example of this. Earlier this summer, it was a beautiful day. I went out and had lunch downtown and sat out on the patio at one of the restaurants. Now, at the table next to me were two guys who were meeting for lunch. They shook hands. They said hello to each other. 
But the second they sat down, out came the phones. I don't think they said more than 10 words to each other over the entire lunch hour. They got their food, they finished eating, they stood up, said thanks for a great lunch, and went their separate ways. <laughs> Folks, pardon my expression, that ain't quality time. Quality time, whether it's with others or with our Lord, means no distractions. You focus all of your energy on one person or the Lord of all creation. When someone pays attention like that, it means a lot. It shows that person that you love them, that you care about them. They're important to you. And if quality time happens to be your primary love language, boy, that just fills you up to know that someone cares that much to share precious time with you. Now, that's important because quality time is also quality conversation. There's listening, there's talking taking place. That sounds simple, doesn't it? Those of you who are married, is communication always easy? Okay, you're being honest, I appreciate that. Communication takes work. And to be honest, we don't always do a good job of listening. Now, to be fair here, how many of us have actually been taught how to listen? Hmm, now isn't that interesting? Because when you listen, you're usually passive. You're on the receiving end, and you don't really have to do a whole lot. But what happens in most conversations, and I'm guilty of this one big time, you listen for a few seconds. You pick up a few key words to get an idea of what the whole thing's about. And being the planner that I am, you then spend the rest of your time figuring out, okay, what am I going to say in response to this? You don't always hear much of what's said. We've just not really been taught how to listen. Because listening is hard work. It's active. You're engaged. You're looking at the person. You're trying to catch nonverbal signs, the intonation of their voice, their body language. Are they tensed up? Are they relaxed? Do they have their head up or down? What words are they saying? What emotions are they trying to evoke? Are they angry? Oh, frustrated. Sad, but really happy. You see, active listening is hard work. And this goes with our relationship with God, too. I'll get to that in a minute. But that's quality time. And it's quality conversation. Listening and reflecting back. The other side is talking. In his book, I love this, Gary Chapman points out two extremes when it comes to talkers. One he calls the Dead Sea. The other is the babbling brook. <laughs> Let's go to the Dead Sea first. The Dead Sea is the lowest spot on the earth. We know that. Water flows into it, but then it goes absolutely nowhere. In other words, there are people who have seen and heard all kinds of fascinating things in their lives, but they're very content to just keep it all to themselves. I see several of you looking at each other. <laughs> They feel no need to share or talk with anybody. If you were to drive this individual from Sandpoint to Boise, why, they'd be happy to not say a word the whole way there. But, on the other extreme are the babbling brooks. These are the ones that the minute they see or hear something, they are going to tell you about it and keep going and going and going. If you rode from Sandpoint to Boise, all eight hours, with a babbling brook, you would be utterly exhausted by the time you get there. Do they inhale? Now, you see, you know people at both extremes here. God created us all unique. Thank goodness most of us are somewhere in the middle here. So, if there's quality talking and active listening, you have shared life with one another. A quality conversation is a golden thing. It's a God thing. But if your love language is quality time, boy, that just fills you up because another person has shared their life with you. Third thing about quality time is simply doing things together. The activity itself doesn't matter. It's secondary to what you're doing, and the fact you're doing it. You're with another person. 
If your friend's love language is quality time, the best thing you can do is to do an activity with them. Let's say your buddy is always asking you to go golfing. Now, if you golf like I do, I tell squirrels to get off the course because they will be beheaded by the time I'm done. <laughs> golfing is not my thing. I do it occasionally, but it's scary. And you don't want to go golfing because you don't want to cause pain for squirrels. <laughs> but if it's important to your friend, though, you go ahead and do it and send out the warning ahead of time. You see, it speaks volumes. That is a precious commodity. It takes part of your life to give that to someone else. And when you do, it conveys love. Okay, so where does God fit into all this? You know, this is all nice psychology. It's all fun and everything. Where does God fit in? Well, let's think about the God who created heaven, earth, all the people, all the things that are there. The God of all creation says, I have all the time you need. God is available 24, 7, 365, or 6. His time is your time. And you know what's even better? He understands perfectly and completely what you need. He created you. He made each one of you who are here unique, loved individuals. When you express to him the frustrations in your life, he already knows what you're talking about. Because talk about a great listener. God has all the time in the world to listen to you. And even if this is not your primary love language, God is giving each one of us quality time. If it is your primary love language, man, that fills you up. Because that's when he shows you his unconditional love. And when your quality time, or when quality time is your love language, Here's what you'll find yourself doing. Spending time in prayer. Spending time with the Lord. That is when God really hits you hard in a good way. Because in prayer you will discover in a fresh and new way just how much God loves you. God speaks directly to that language of quality time. Think about this in Genesis. God came down in the cool of the evening to be face to face with Adam and Eve in the garden. They were called friend of God. That's something we will get to experience face to face when we're home with our Lord in heaven. And Jesus models this for us in Luke chapter 6. He went out to a mountainside and spent the entire night in prayer with his Father in heaven. Now that's quality time. Consider Psalm 84, verse 2. My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. The psalmist is crying out. He wants to spend quality time with God. And God speaks that language. He pours into the psalmist, and he pours into you. But there's the best example I can find of God spending quality time with us, and he continues to for us. There were a lot of other things Jesus could have done than willingly set his face towards Jerusalem and the cross that he knew was waiting there. You see, even though he knew the cross meant pain, abandonment, talk about the opposite of quality time, death, Jesus took the time to say, you're of enough value for me that I'm going to give my life up for you. Talk about quality in the full. Because without his death, what would we have to look forward to? There would only be separation. Our brokenness and sin would have pulled us apart from God forever. And that's not what he wanted. He desires to bring us forgiveness and life instead of death. It didn't end there, though, as I always say, don't forget Easter. Three days later, Jesus took the time to come back from the grip of death, hell, and Satan himself to rise to life again. He took the time to burst out of that tomb, proving that death is not the final victor. And in its place, he opens the door to heaven the gift of eternal 
quality time with our God himself. Yeah, time's a precious thing. We all have packed schedules. But if quality time is your primary love language, I implore you, spend time with God. Actually, that's for all of us. If you know someone in your circle of family and friends that quality time means the world to, you make time for them. Because all of us want to know and need to be loved. God speaks fluently all five love languages. Why does he do that? Well, because he wants you to know beyond a shadow of a doubt. You're his child. He knows what you need. And he is waiting to provide it for you. In Jesus' name, amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all of our human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the true faith of our Lord Jesus. Amen.